Hey, what's going on guys? Jay's Two Cents here, and I want to do a little bit of a refresher course, if you will, on what bottlenecking really is. I continue to get emails um, that are asking me questions from new builders, and it's obvious that there's still a lot of confusion around what CPU bottlenecking is when it comes to your graphics card. So today we're going to show you what a normal operation looks like, and then we're going to basically do it the Mythbusters way where we just force bottlenecking to happen in its most obvious form so you can see what it really looks like. So anyway, stay tuned, we're gonna talk about it today. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. Wish you had a new graphics card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Mino. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones or just get them for yourself. So we have a couple different pieces of software we're gonna be using here for this. I've got XTU because this is an Intel CPU and I've gotta be able to artificially slow down and make our CPU dumber. I, I mean, if I, I should have really gone in here and disabled some cores. We can still do that. I've got hardware monitor on here just so I can kind of keep an eye on what some of the voltages and stuff that are happening in the system. That's not totally necessary because the other stuff we'll be using is on MSI Afterburner where we're gonna be making our card a little faster and we're gonna be using Afterburner to monitor what's happening while in game so we can see what our performance limits are for the graphics card. Fortunately, the card will tell the system, hey, here's why I'm limited. The card is always gonna be limited. Right now, sitting here doing nothing at the desktop, it's actually limited. What's limiting the card right now, sitting in its idle state, is the fact that there's no load. That's considered a no load limit. It's like we're idle because there's no load. So that's what's limiting it, is nothing is asking for it to do anything. You've got voltage limit, which is basically what's gonna, any 40 series is gonna hit voltage limits pretty much before anything else uh, when it comes to like power limit and such. There's power limit. On older generation graphics cards, you'd see where power and the amount of power that the card is able to request is uh, hit the limit. The, the actual physical limits of what the VRMs and the whole power design system is able to produce. And then the other one is uh, temperature limit. And that's where your graphics card has hit its max temperature rating, um, where at that point, if it doesn't start to normalize, it will start to slow down the clocks to bring the temperatures down. So those are kind of like the limiting factors. Now I've got XTU on here because I'm gonna slow down the CPU. But right now it's a 12900K at 5100 megahertz or 5.1 gigahertz on the performance cores for all core. And then we're at 3.9 gigahertz for the efficiency cores. We're gonna be using Cyberpunk for today's video, but first let me max out the power limit at 133, our temp limit at 88 and we'll go ahead and do like a 150 megahertz overclock on the frequency, and we're gonna go with uh, something very low, like 500 megahertz overclock on the RAM, and then we are also going to lock the GPU fans at like 80. Now the idea about bottlenecking, that means that something in your system's performance is being hindered by something else's performance. Now, a lot of people will misunderstand or misconstrue the concept of bottlenecking they'll see, oh, my frequency started to drop some, suddenly on my GPU, so it must be limited. It must be bottlenecked or something, but that's not always the case. There's a million different reasons why your, your frequency can fluctuate in your graphics card. Um, what we're really looking for here are huge stutters, any sort of long pauses, and that's when the instruction for the graphics card is actually put on hold by the CPU while the CPU catches up with other instructions that it's been tasked with doing, before it can get to the GPU. But we're also gonna be looking for things like FPS drops. The true indicator of bottlenecking is gonna be seeing wild swings in FPS. You're getting 200 FPS, you're getting 20 FPS, you're getting 140 FPS, you're getting 70, you're getting 220 again. Because as those instructions are happening, the amount of time the GPU is having to wait is varying, which is why you're seeing the FPS vary. It's a much deeper conversation than that, but it's not just what is the max FPS I'm getting? It's how big is that cone in its performance swing? So with that said, everything running normal speeds right now with our graphics card overclocked. Let's go ahead and get into Cyberpunk. The world in Cyberpunk does a great job at asking a lot of the CPU, especially with all the AI in the game, as well as allowing the graphics card, uh, depending on your settings, to also not be engine limited. The other problem that we deal with sometimes is people will Okay, I get it. Turn down. Sometimes people will hit a world engine or an API engine limit 
when it comes to the way that a game is designed and think that that's a bottleneck. So technically it is, the GPU is just being bottlenecked by the game. The game is no longer capable of going any higher. So if we take a look at what's happening on the screen right here, we'll see a few different things. GPUs at 33C, this is GPU utilization. So the menu right now is only asking for 40% of the GPU's total capabilities. This is our power percent. If this right now we're set to 133, so we'll never hit power limit right now with this 4090 because we will never get anywhere near 133% of its power limit just because of the way that the 12 volt high power connector is designed. That's the wattage it's using. Right here, limiting is voltage. And voltage is a good thing. We want to see voltage as our limiter. If we see voltage, that means our GPU is being allowed to go as fast as it wants. For graphics in here, I'm on ray tracing medium. I'm gonna turn ray tracing off. Again, we're trying to add more work to the CPU right now. So the faster we can render those frames, the harder it is on the CPU. So we're gonna go high 1440p, um, which is pretty ridiculous for a 12900K and a 4090. We are also not going to be doing the synthetic benchmark because we need to be in the world to allow the CPU to truly have to do some stuff. Okay, so as you can see right now, we are locked at 2910, and we're at 89% utilization, 90%. The reason for that is our current settings. So what is actually limiting us right now is we're probably gonna be seeing a fair amount of CPU load. So let me go ahead and add CPU to our uh, monitor because we also need to know what the CPU is doing. Okay, so I've added all the CPU cores in here now. As you can see, there's a couple doing 2%, 1%. This is gonna be the world thread right here, or the render thread. This is the one responsible for the game. That's at 51%. That's like everything is running off of that core. And then other background tasks that the game is maybe doing in world generation can be happening on these 2% bouncing around. Now, interestingly enough, you know, we're gonna, overall, we're only seeing 2% utilization. And this is why it's important to you see what's happening on all the cores? Because if I only showed CPU utilization right now as a whole and it shows 2%, you're like, ah, it's fine. But that's 2% when averaged out amongst all of the cores. So clearly we have one core that's over 50%. That's, you, that's accounting for the 2%. Right, so you can see why you have to see all of the cores. But if I want to put the GPU at full load, just so we can kind of compare what normal functionality looks like, we're gonna go ahead and bump this up to ultra. And we can even go to 4K. And we won't need to restart for that. Now we're at 99% load and uh, our power limit also went up with it. So by going with a higher resolution, we've now offloaded more work to the GPU it's taking the GPU longer to render those frames because there's significantly more data happening now with the resolution change as well as the settings change, which means the CPU, I should probably get out of traffic, which means the CPU is no longer being tasked with, hey, handle all these frames while it has to also have a comp an entire computer running off of it. So there you go. Now if I go to back to high, I should go into low, even in 4K low. Now we're back up to the 50s, 58, 53. And now the GPU usage, as you can see, dropped back down to 76. Now, someone could probably look at this and argue that this is, this is bottlenecking. But here's the thing, if you didn't have these numbers up on screen, you probably would be hard pressed to say, oh, my GPU is not running at its max speed. It's not running its max capability because it's super smooth. Like it doesn't look like or feel like bottlenecking. Let's now go ahead and introduce some actual bottlenecking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna go into XTU. I'm gonna take an entire gigahertz away from 5.1 to 4.1 on the performance core. Now, if we go back into the game, it's at 63%. So I guess at 4.1, the 12900K is still capable of running a 4090 and not seeing anything terrible happen. But let's take a look at our FPS. And the nice thing about being in one spot like this is we can see what happens here. So we, we dropped to 156. Well, we're showing 100 and upper 150s on the FPS. If I go back up to 5.1, 177. So we lost 20 FPS by going from 5.1 to 4.1. What we've created here is an imbalance in the system where you are not getting the full performance of the GPU, which under full technical specifications would say is bottlenecking. But this is just an example of if you had a, a really mispaired CPU with a GPU, you're gonna get smooth performance. Like we're not getting that wild swing. I mean, sure, depending on where I look in the world, it's not fluctuating enough 
to make things look stuttery. There's no, there hasn't been any pauses. I'm all walking around traffic. There hasn't been any hiccups. Nothing strange is happening. Okay, so I've dropped the core frequency down to 3.2 gigahertz for the 12900K, which is the lowest I can set it in XTU. That's like the lowest multiplier I can set. So what that means is, I mean, look, our GPU usage is even down into the 60s now. Frequency is locked, power is down, so that's an indicator the GPU is doing less, but we're still getting roughly-ish the same FPS. It's maybe 10 to 15 lower once again, but you still would probably have a hard time seeing this difference without an indicator on the screen. Now again, I'm not saying this isn't bottlenecking, but what I'm saying is this is not indicative of what the worst case bottlenecking is gonna look like. But you see our CPUs, that one core is still not hitting 100. So you can absolutely be affecting your performance of your GPU without having a core be maxed out. You don't have to see the CPU get into the 90 to 100% usage range. That's where we're gonna see the huge stutters and slowdowns. So let's go ahead now that I've showed you just how your GPU absolutely can be affected by your CPU and not really classify itself as quote unquote bottlenecking. Let's see what happens now when we go and make this CPU very slow and a very low core count. Okay, so as you can see, I have neutered our CPU to a quad core P core with no E cores at all. And look, now we have one core that's at 90%. Remember, we were sitting at about 100 to 102 FPS with its current max ray tracing settings and stuff. So I wanna see if that's changed at all. Oh, well, look at the low. Well, it's maxing out while loading. We are 20, 10 FPS down. Look at the cores though. One of them now, now one of the cores are maxed. And look, look how much we've dropped on our GPU usage now from the mid nineties down to the mid eighties to low eighties. Um, anyway, we now need to go ahead and hit the CPU pretty hard. So as you can see, 120 FPS. We're, don't forget, we were at 170 something prior. We still are at 5.1 gigahertz on the four core. It is noticeably jittery. So what we're probably starting to see now, and I don't have it on the screen, is our frame timing is probably now suffering from this high CPU usage. As you saw, all cores spiked 100 for a second there. As those cores are gonna start spiking and doing things, that's when we'll start noticing any sort of hiccups. Now, it does feel jittery. Now, 80 FPS normally doesn't feel, that was bad right there. It dropped down to 53 for a second. Look at our core clock, it's dropping. Look at our usage, it's dropping. Even at 5.2 gigahertz, I've still managed to bottleneck it enough to where, oh, it's voltage, but it said no limit for a second there. Oh, there it goes, no load. Let's now drop this down to 3.2 so we can see actual real bad bottlenecking. Oh, this, this is like, oh. So I know this is gonna be normalizing it to 30 FPS for you guys to see on a video. It is, I feel like I'm playing it on a potato right now. It's 47, 49, obviously I'm running around. Ah, there's a car there. Okay, now we're at 1080p and obviously it is, actually we didn't really lose any FPS when we were at 4K, but ironically the GPU has well, here, here's these swings I was talking about in frequency. <laughs> I mean, look at this. So right now, the, the CPU is sending frames to the GPU so slowly, the GPU is just like, bro, we're not doing anything. We're not under, under load right now. 2,500, 1,500, 1,400, 1,200, 1,800, 13. This is like, for all intents and purposes, what bottlenecking looks like. Now, again, you can make the argument that if the GPU can speed up by removing any sort of limiting factor, that that limiting factor was a quote unquote bottleneck. But now we're talking like, how narrow is the neck, right? There's, there's bottlenecks all over your system, right? Whether it be the game engine, or it be the refresh rate of your monitor. There's a million different things in your system creating, um, scenarios where a component's waiting on another component. And that's not bottlenecking, that's just the way computers work. But this is a bottleneck where we've got like a 10 lane highway going down into a single lane dirt road, which is what we've created right here. So this is what bottlenecking looks like. And I think this is what people are afraid are gonna happen if they don't have like the perfect pairing of a CPU and a GPU. But as you saw, even at low settings, uh, down to 3.2 gigahertz. I couldn't go any slower on the graphics on the CPU 
with even a 12900K dropped all the way down, and yes, it's still considered a high, higher end CPU, I had to go pretty significantly extreme to create a situation where I could even show you what this narrow bottleneck looks like. All I was doing as I changed things was taking lanes away from how narrow the road went. So a little bit of tapering is gonna happen, no matter what. But this is what you wanna avoid by grabbing like say a 13100K and putting a 4090 on it. Cause I kind of created one of those right here. <laughs> so anyway, there you go guys. I just wanted to do a little bit of a refresher here to sort of give you guys an idea of what true bottlenecking looks like as I'm gonna speed this back up. You would actually have to try pretty hard these days to really bottleneck your hardware. Any modern CPU with any modern GPU is gonna pair nicely. It's when you try to get like, I'm gonna get a 4080 and I'm gonna throw it on my 2700K. <laughs> Clearly that would not be ideal. So there becomes a point where um, you have to upgrade your CPU, but it's not nearly as recent as you think it needs to be. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next one.